there are two universal languages, food. That's so good. And music. This track is fire. My name is Matt FX. I'm a record producer and in-demand DJ. But my other passion is food. Oh my God. It's the perfect bite. Cheers, guys. America is a country of immigrants. And there's no better example of that than New York City. My mother came here from China just under 30 years ago. My father was born in Queens, though his folks both came here from Eastern Europe. New York is ever-changing, but at its core, this is a city defined by its diverse cultural history. And I'm so grateful for friends who are happy to show me what's good. We're here in Brooklyn, New York, right off Flatbush Avenue. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. I've been hearing about this dish on Twitter, mostly, called jollof rice. From what I understand, it's a West African classic, but beyond that, I know very little. Luckily today, I'm going to meet a friend named Toon. Toon is the global head of African music and culture at Spotify. Who better to educate me about jollof rice and all the other amazing West African dishes than Toon himself? Yo. Wow, you're swagged out today, huh? How are you? How's it going, man? Good to see you, man. Tuna's been coming to Amarachi for a minute. He loves the spot for its bomb Nigerian food. Traditional dishes like jollof rice, beef suya, red snapper, all those spices create such a complex yet familiar flavor. The place is a restaurant by day and a lounge by night. Good food and good music. Sounds like my kind of spot. I have been seeing you tweeting about, in particular, jollof rice. Oh, absolutely. But even more than that, just like West African food for quite some time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And honestly, like, I pride myself about knowing a bit about all different types of cuisines, but I couldn't know less about this kind of food. Jollof rice is definitely like the staple dish of West Africa. It okay. was invented by the Wolof people in Senegal. It means one pot. And when you say one pot, yes. is the dish is something that's cooked in one? Correct. So a lot of Nigerians will prepare jollof for gatherings, large gatherings, parties, yeah. you know, weddings, in yeah. one giant pot. You get that smoky, rich, woody flavor would come from that one pot. Ah, oh, man, I am starving. Can I please get the, the snapper with the jollof? Okay. Can he get jollof with beef suya? So, so suya is like a, it's a shish kebab, but the Nigerian version. It's halal meat. They pray over it, they spice it up, it's very spicy, very, very delicious. I'm very, very excited. A lot of the Afro pop music that's coming out now, you hear a lot of mentionings of, you know, jollof rice, plantains, like the, a lot of our foods are synonymous with Absolutely. other aspects of our culture. And Nigeria, like, musically, is really going through somewhat of a renaissance right now, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially with Afropop and Afrobeat. Afrobeats, you add the S to the end. No, Afrobeats doesn't exist. Afrobeats doesn't exist? It's not a real thing. It's not a real Afro thing. Afrobeats was Tell a made-up term. Tell that to YouTube. <laughs> Afrobeats is a made-up term that okay. a bunch of non-African journalists made up okay. to call the state of African pop music today. There's a bunch of artists that are shaping the new sound coming out of Africa right now. And you have artists like Wizkid, David yeah. O, Malik Berry, Techno, Burna Boy. Burna Boy, so, I love Burna yeah, Boy. So it's making yeah. music with R&B artists, making yeah. music with pop artists. I mean, yeah. Burna Boy just put out a record with Lily Allen. Exactly, so it's really great to see that. Yeah. Oh, this is amazing. Wow. This Oh my god. I'm so excited to try this thing. Tell me your instant thoughts about it. What do you think about the suya? I mean, I'm practically speechless. It's... Yeah, welcome. Oh my god. It is so, so good. I'm yes. trying to pick out some of the spices. Ground pepper. Ground pepper. There's yes. maybe a little bit of cumin, cumin. I want to say. Absolutely. There's almost a, a sweetness to it. There's, you know what? That sweetness you're tasting, it's love. That's the love. Hey, you guys. This is one of the owners of the restaurant. What can you tell us about Nigerian jollof rice? I mean, everyone loves it. It's people eat jollof morning, night, afternoon, any time of the day, jollof is there for you. I'm so blown away by this spice blend. I mean, is there any way you'd be able to share the recipe with me? 
If you had a billion dollars, I probably still wouldn't give it to you. <laughs> you know, but I but I can give you some some tips on how to create your Respect. own jello. Respect to that. <laughs> we don't tell our secrets. Yeah. One of the things we love are spices. Time is very important. The special rub I actually created is called the bub rub, and that's a secret. Amazing. The sweetness of the onions and the texture, the flavor. That red pepper gives you the, the natural sweetness and the color. And then the tomato, everything we eat has tomatoes. Would you drop a little bit of bub rub absolutely, on my hand? I would just absolutely. love to try this one. Paprika? Nope. No? <laughs> Sugar? A little bit. There's garlic in this too. Yes. yes. Onion powder? No onion no? powder. Don't rock your brain, it's People okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm giving up. <laughs> well done, well done. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, I get it now. When, when something is truly next level, you can't pick out the spices because they work in such a beautiful harmony. Yes. It's almost like a classic Beatles track or something where there's so many different instruments playing in on that one note that you can't possibly know what it was. It's that Phil Spector wall of sound. Yeah. But guys, thank you so much. We're about to get very busy. Thank, thank you. All right. I'm glad you're enjoying it, man. Dude, you don't even know. <laughs> Oh, I knew. Trust me. Cheers, man. Thank Cheers. you so much. It was so great catching up with Toon. While I'm in Brooklyn, I'm meeting up with another friend, Sinead, who's over in Crown Heights. She's deeply connected to her Trinidadian roots, especially the food. I love spending time in this part of the city. These neighborhoods are so real, so culturally rich. Brooklyn at its finest. Oh, Yo! What's up? What's up? Oh, this is one of my besties for life. Her name is Sinead. I call her Sid. We met on the first day of high school. We worked on a ton of music together. A couple years ago, actually, we went down to Trinidad during Carnival. Oh, yeah, we shot a trap cover video. We shot there. her debut music video. <laughs> Unbelievable experience, absolutely life-changing. Sinead exposed me to so much culture and food in Trinidad. While filming our video, we ate our way through that island. Back in Brooklyn, her local spot is Ali's Roti, and no matter how much I just ate, I'm always down to catch up over another good bite. Let's get some more roti. Come on. Chicken roti. Roti is a savory wrap filled with curried stew and all kinds of vegetables and sauces. The best part is being able to customize it as you go along. You know the drill. So wait, what are you putting in there right now? Potatoes. That's potatoes. This is shana. Shana, shana. that's uh, chickpeas, yeah? Chickpeas. Okay. And then what other options can go inside of the roti? Well, you could have spinach. Honestly, can you put a little spinach in mine, please? A little spinach. Thank in. you. And tamarind and pepper sauce, please. Thank you. And you're getting what? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get the same exact thing. You're get <laughs> That's everything down to the tamarind is perfect. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. This curry is so good. Takes me right back. Port of Spain. Side of the road. Food truck, roti. I had no idea what we were eating. You're just ordering for us. Five, four, three, two, three. That was the craziest introduction ever. Cause like immediately, these foreign flavors everywhere wrapped up so nice. I mean, one thing y'all have figured out as a nation is how to eat on the go. Yo, I wouldn't be surprised if this curry's been stewing for like a day. It's got such a deep, classic curry flavor. It's just rich, yeah. The potatoes are perfectly soft. Yeah. And that tamarind sauce is so bomb. I love. It's so good. Good call on the spinach. I know. I got it from my dad. Yeah? He just pounds everything in. I almost put in pumpkin, but I decided against that. I feel like I'm getting it all over my beard. They tell me to take smaller bites, but you know. <laughs> take only I gotta take a big risk. Mm. You used to live right around here, right? Yeah, like literally around the corner. I grew up like down this street. That's incredible. Yeah, I just feel like I'm really fortunate to be a child of immigrants because you know, I get to still be intact with my culture. It's right around the corner. 
You know, culture is what makes us who we are. And obviously, we're constantly changing and we're constantly evolving, just like food and music are. You know, all you have to do is take one bite of this roti, and it goes from being just another wrapper or burrito to being something so much more special. Yeah. And I think with the same way, once you start listening to Soka, once you start listening to Trini music, you realize just how much deeper this tradition goes. Right. It's been an incredible day today, chilling with Sid, catching up with Toon, learning about jollof rice, eating some roti, and reminiscing about Trinidad. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of your own culture in a city of so many, but it's good to reconnect with your own background. And I figured the best possible place to wind up would be Chelsea Market, somewhere I've been going all my life since I was a kid with my mother. Chelsea Market is a restaurant called Very Fresh Noodles that make hand-pulled noodles in a traditional Chinese style. Yo, Victor, what's up? What's dude? up? How's Welcome. Going, man? Oh, man. All right, so this is our uh, dried cumin beef noodle. My favorite. I've been coming to the spot since it opened. In fact, I was their very first online order. They didn't even have a delivery app set up yet. I actually slid on their DMs. I feel like every time I come here, you guys are so busy, and there's always a line all the way around the store. I remember when it was a tiny little place. It used to be a, a 90 square foot booth. Wow. So now you guys have a humongous, beautiful stand. Yeah, man, it's, it's been a long time coming. So what exactly goes into these noodles? We start making our noodles early in the morning. Throughout the day, we're training the noodles to pull horizontally. Okay. So this guy right here has been resting for at least uh, two hours. Right. Kind of training itself to go this way, and it's like this really pliable thing now. It's in the dough itself, you know? It's... So it's like this? Exactly. And then you join them? Kind of join it this way, and then slap it out. And then like that? Something like that. <laughs> Well, yeah. For people who haven't had hand-pulled noodles before, they have to realize this is something so unique and special, a texture of which you're really not gonna find anywhere else in the world. Yeah, man, it's a, an experience in itself. It's alive. <laughs> Tell me about everything else, the soup, the beef. How do you get from noodles to the top of the bowl? The beef that's in here has been cooked for about 10 hours. I mean, it's so tender. There's a sauce that we make here that's like 20 ingredients. There's cumin in there, fennel, yeah. Chinese five spice in there. Love five spice. It's like all these layers of flavor. Dude, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Yeah. Oh my God. So good. That beef is some of the most tender beef I've ever had. These noodles bring me right back to China. It's unbelievable how you can eat something and immediately just have memories rushing right back. The give on that noodle is just so unique. The cumin and the five spice with the cilantro and the slow braise, this melt in your mouth. It's just so fragrant. It's such an explosion of flavor. It's funny because when I woke up today, I thought I was just gonna go hang out with friends, you know? Hang out with a dude who I have so much respect for, and catch up with an artist I work with. Really what I'm taking away from this is just how important it is to keep your culture in mind. And I mean, look, I'm all about the new, I'm all about the future. But in reality, like, you know, sometimes you have to look back to look forward. And I'm glad I got the chance to do that today. It tasted really good too. <laughs> You just watched In the Mix with Matt FX. If you like what you saw, click here and subscribe to Genius Kitchen.